Okay, so last time we were discussing about some uh, example showing that uh, square root of a rational number, positive rational number, which is not a perfect square, is a rational number. Similarly, square root of a integer, positive integer, which is also not a perfect square, and will be a irrational number. And in fact, we have seen the first part is okay. Second part, we were just checking, and we have come to that. Suppose m is a positive integer, which is not a perfect square, which is not a perfect square. Is it not? That is square root of m. Then we will show uh, to show square root of m is a is an an irrational number, is it not? That we were discussing. So we have proved this by contradiction. Is suppose it is an irrational number. Suppose square root of m is an irrational number. Is a rational number, sorry, is a rational number which is of the form say p by q, where p and q, where p by q is in its lowest form, lowest form p by q is in lowest form and q is not equal to 0. There is no common factor between p and q and it is in the form. Okay. So, what we get is and this number p by q is a rational number. So, we can identify the two integer in between this number will lie. So, let lambda lambda plus 1 be the two integers. such that lambda less than say p by q less than lambda plus 1. That is what we get is lambda q is less than p less than lambda plus 1 into q. Okay. Now, from here we can say that p minus lambda q is strictly less than q. Let it be 1, because this will be required. That is what we want is less. This will be required. Okay. Again, it is given that root m, we are assuming it is a rational number, which is of the form p by q. So, p square y q square is equal to m. That is, p square minus q square min, uh, equal to m q square p square equal to m q square or p square minus m q square will be 0. So, this is also second. Now, let us consider this UK. consider the expression m q minus lambda p whole square consider that. minus m times p minus lambda q. Okay. Let us consider this. So, basically what we are doing that this expression if I open it, then it can be put it in the form of lambda square minus m into p square minus m q square. One can easily just verify it. Now, p square is equal to m q square because of the 2. So, basically this will come out to be 0 because of 2. Okay. Therefore, from here m can be written as m will be written as uh, this is or oh, this is square sorry square of this otherwise this problem will come. Okay. This is square sorry m q minus m dot this is square will come. So, m will come out to be what m q minus lambda p divided by p minus lambda q whole square or this is square this is square. So, root of m will be this. So, root of m 
will be of the form m q minus lambda p over p minus lambda q just taking positive well roots. Okay. Now, p minus lambda q is less than q from 1. So, from 1 what is shows that this shows, but from 1 shows that m uh, square root of m that is m can be written h in the form of the two yes in another form a square root of m is another form where numerator is this and denominator is this which denominator is lower than the denominator which we have assumed q but what we have assumed p by q is in its lowest form so a contradiction exists because m undoubt m is written in the form of p by q which is in lowest form but what you are getting under root m can also be expressed into this form where the denominator is lower than the q less than it means again the denominator is lower so it cannot be lowest form that p by q cannot be lowest form so it is contradiction so it shows that p minus lambda q is less than q that is denominator is strictly less than q so a contradiction that p by q is in lowest form that p by q is in lowest form is in lowest form and this contradiction is used because of a wrong assumption it is a rational number therefore root m is a irrational number Okay. So, that is what we get it clear. So, <laughs> this much we get. Now, let us come to up here. So, what is the continuum? The aggregate of all real, the aggregate of all real numbers all real numbers that is rational and irrational irrationals is called a continuum is called the continuum so basically the set of all real numbers aggregate of all the real number rational is rational we call it a continuum now this continuum is complete this is a complete set this continuum is closed that is completeness is there. What do you mean by this? We have got this real this continuum by applying the Dedekind curves. So, when we apply the Dedekind curves over the set of rational numbers, rationals apply the Dedekind cut. cuts or section then this collection of the rational numbers in fact it is equivalent to the rational numbers when you apply the dead kind curves we are basically bringing this thing into form of the sections so each section will correspond to a some number alpha now this alpha is a maybe a rational number or maybe a irrational number. When we apply the dead kind cut or dead kind theory over the set of rational number, then it basically decomp gives you the sections and collection of all these sections gives the real numbers that is the continuum. 
because the sections which you are getting correspond to a number which may be real, uh, which may be rational or may be irrational. So, over the rational number we are applying the dead kind cut, but we are getting a class which is bigger than the rational numbers, because the sections which you are getting is larger than this elements itself that is number of rational points, because the rational point will also be added there. So, this gives you the total aggregate as a continuum. Now, the question is if suppose I apply the again that kind cut or that kind set method theorem over the set of real numbers that is we again find the sections or curves by using the dead kinds method over the set of real number whether will you get a set of numbers bigger than this set of real numbers. The question is the answer is no by this method we cannot enhance further the set of real number to a bigger class we will get basically the set of real number itself. So, that is why we call it this continuum is closed, but the somebody said why we are having the set of complex number also which is an extension of the real number, but when we talk about the complex number this basically is generated or obtained by some other trick, what the trick is that we are choosing the square root of a negative quantity because if you look the complex number how how this was introduced number the complex number is introduced basically when we look the solution of the equation x square plus 1 is 0 is it not there is no real number there is no real number which satisfy this equation which satisfies equation say 1 we satisfy this equation, but this is also an equation this may uh, may be some physical phenomena may be governed by this equation. So, the question is whether can be further extend the system of real numbers not because of the cut because cut is not helping us dead kind cut is not helping us to extend it, but some other method and that method comes out to be choosing the square root of minus 1 as an imaginary quantity i we choose square root of minus 1 as an imaginary number. And then once it is imaginary number then we develop the set of points where it is of the form x plus i y where x and y both are reals both are reals. And basically this will be represented in the form of the ordered pair x y where x and y if x takes the position of real axis x axis that we call it a real and this is we called a imaginary axis. So, the position of this point x y basically is the same as x plus i y in a complex plane c in a complex plane c. Okay. <coughs> now, this leads to a extends complex number system of the set of all complex number which is an extension of real because once you buy 0 then basically it uh, gives you entire real line. So, it is an extension no doubt, but it the way you have extended the real number is entirely different the dead kinds method clear we are not. So, this is a separate and by this method when you are extending the real to complex this collection of the complex number does not behave as smooth as our set of real numbers, because between two real numbers one can easily ordered one can say this two given number either they are equal or one is greater than the other, but in case of the complex no ordering can be defined. In fact, if suppose the complex numbers complex numbers are not ordered set or not ordered set it means that is there no order can be defined z 1 z 2 are two complex number you cannot say z 1 is greater than z 2 or z 1 is less than z 2 
except when equal to of course, when you say z 1 is equal to z 2 b assume the real part is equal to real imaginary part is equal to imaginary, but otherwise greater than or less than will not be there. In fact, we need a contradiction because suppose there is ordering refine suppose i is greater than 1. So, i is complex number 1 is also complex number because 1 can be written as 1 plus i 0. Okay. Then what happens? I 1 is positive. So, I is greater than 1 means you are assuming to be a positive quantity. So, let us multiply by I again. So, what you get? I square is greater than 1 again, but I square is minus 1 is greater than 1. So, a contradiction. It means we cannot uh, similarly if you assume less than we also lead to a contradiction. Okay. So, this shows that ordering relation cannot be defined over a complex set of complex numbers. So, it is a different different <coughs> system, okay, different stream where we discuss the complex number, but this is a very important uh, area also where the all analytic function, and entire functions and all these things Cauchy, Rochi, various integrals real integrals can be computed with the help of the complex integration. So, it is a very important uh, field where the people can use it in the application part. So, that is what okay. So, this is uh, now let us see few exercise which way I wanted to give it. <coughs> so, that by using Dedekind cut cuts by using Dedekind cuts that if alpha and beta are two are two irrational numbers. Relation numbers, then alpha minus beta is positive or negative or negative according age, according age alpha is greater than beta or alpha is less than beta. So, using the Dedekind cuts we wanted to prove this part. Okay. So, let us see uh, okay. suppose we have solution. Now, alpha and beta are given to be a two irrational number. So, obviously, it can be represented by means of cuts. So, let alpha is represented by a cut L 1 R 1, while the beta is represented by a cut L 2 R 2. Okay. Now, <coughs> alpha is less than beta. So, here we are having this is a alpha is greater than beta. So, alpha is here, beta is somewhere here. This is L 1, this is R 1, here this is L 2, here is R 2. Now, when alpha is greater than beta, it means every elements alpha is greater than then every number or every element, every number of R1 or belongs to R1 is in R2. All the elements of R1 will be in R2, but Okay. But every member of L1 L1 does not every member of L1 does not belongs to L2. Is it not? That is what is it. So, every member of R 1 is in R 2, but every member of uh, L 2 L 1 
is not there. So, there may be some member which is in R 2. So, let let even be such a member be such a member of L 1 which does not which does not belong to L 2. So, if it does not belong to L 2 that is it belongs to R 2. So, here is some say A 1 this is number A 1 okay, which is in L 1, but not in L 2. So, it must be in R 2. Let us choose a number B 2. Now, let B 2 be a number, be a member of R 2 such that A 1 is greater than B 2. Suppose, B 2 I am choosing this number. Okay. So, A 1 minus B 2 is positive. B 2 be a number of R 2 such that A 1 is greater than B 2 now. A 1 oh sorry then yes we should write like this B 2 here is it not. So, let it A 1 this is B 2. Okay. So, A 1 minus B 2 is greater than 0 is this clear. Now, A 1 uh, this uh, alpha minus beta we wanted to prove this is to what is to prove alpha minus beta is positive. So, when it is a positive number what do you mean by that a cut if I apply a, the definition of that kind cuts then a number is said to be a positive when its lower class contains some positive numbers is it not yes. then only the it considered to be positive. Okay. So, lower class will be some L 3 alpha minus beta represented by a class a L 3 R 3. So, let alpha minus beta 3 alpha minus beta is represented by a section say L 3 R 3. If I prove L 3 contains some positive quantity positive number also then it the alpha minus beta becomes greater than 0. Okay. Now, this L 3 what is this uh, alpha minus L 3 is the sum of so, it is okay, alpha minus given by the uh, L 3. Now, L 3 is the sum of sum of what alpha minus beta alpha is in where alpha this is alpha is it not and beta is here. Now, this a minus a 1 minus b 2 is positive. So, L 3 we can say can be say like this that L 3 is the sum of is the sum of uh, any member of L 1 any member of L 1 n 1 and any member of minus L 2 and any member of uh, let it now be such let us write this thing be such that L 3 is the sum of any member of L 1 and any member of of any member of minus R 2 any member of minus R 2 and any member and any member of R 3 any member of R 3 is the sum of is the sum of any member of any member of R 1 and any member of minus L and any member of 
minus L 2. Let us see what is the meaning of this. Eh? We wanted to show the alpha minus beta to be positive. So, let us suppose alpha minus beta represents a cut by L 3 R 3 okay? and we are assuming that this cut is such that L 3 any member of the L 3 is the sum of the member of L 1 and any member of minus R 2. So, if we take any element of L 3 it can be written as the sum of the elements of L 1 and minus R 2 member of minus R 2. Similarly, if we take uh, R 3 then any member of R 3 we are assuming as a sum of the member of R 1 and any member of minus L 2 is it ok or not. So, therefore, a 1 minus b 2 what is this is it not the same as a 1 plus minus b 2. Now, a 1 belongs to what a 1 belongs to L 1 a 1 belongs to L 1 b 1 b 2 is in R 2. So, minus b 2 b 2 is in R 2. So, minus b 2 will be in minus R 2 is it not. Therefore, this is the sum of L 1 this belongs to L 1 plus minus R 2 and that is nothing but L 3 that is nothing but L 3 and this a 1 minus b 2 is greater than 0 positive. So, a section L 3 R 3 which is assumed to represent the number alpha minus beta is such that it contains the positive numbers. So, alpha minus beta therefore, this alpha minus beta is a positive cut is positive. So, that is what it is it ok or not. So, just by <coughs> this you can do it. Now, let us take another exercise. Okay. Specify the sections, specify the sections, the section. Specify the sections corresponding to the irrational number irrational number corresponding to irrational number E. Specify the sections corresponding to irrational number E and prove that. and prove that the section so specified so specified section so specified satisfy all the requirement satisfies dead kinds theorem or satisfy all the postulates or axioms or the postulate of dead kinds theorem. Okay, because there are three postulates in dead kinds theorem. What are they? That uh, we can divide the number uh, whole system into real number into two classes, lower and upper class, and each class is non-empty. Second one is that uh, at least uh, uh, lower class every element in the lower class is uh, the uh, le less than the elements of the upper class and third is any rational number will belongs to any number will belongs to either this class rational number or that class like this is it not. So, these three postulates are there. So, we can show. So, what is a, that corresponding to E you first define the sections okay, and then show that this section satisfy the condition. Okay. Let us see this. Uh, what is E? If you remember, E is the limiting value of 1 plus 1 by n to the power n. This is the E, is it not? But here we cannot take the limit because we want it in terms of the sections. So, let us say uh, let a n 
is 1 plus 1 by n to the power n, where n is a positive integer. n is a positive integer. Okay. Now, let us consider the define the classes as follows. Define the lower class L as the set of those rational number x, as the set of those rational number x, set of those rational x such that a n is greater than x, a n uh, is greater than x from and after some time, from and after some fixed value of n. That is those rational number belongs to L for which a n is greater than x for after some is number n naught for some value of n naught fixed value. Say after n equal to n naught a n is greater than x then we say x will be in L and row upper class R I am defining this with a upper class R okay. the rational number by by is in rest is in upper class R if by each or such that if you write if a n is greater than okay. if uh, by each greater than a n is strictly greater than a n for all values of n for all values of n. So, lower class I am defining the element x rational number belongs to the lower class if a n this number a n is greater than x after a certain stage say n is in n naught and r is the those rational number if by is greater than a n for each n. We claim that this will be a this section the way in which we have defined will satisfy all the conditions of Dedekind's theorem. So, what is first condition is both the class L and R must be non empty. So, there must be at least one element should be available in R from A n as well as some element of A 1 A n must be in R. Okay. Now, if we look what is n? n is a positive integer. Okay. Now, if I take n any positive integer this sum will always be greater than 1 when n is greater than 1 this number will always be greater than 1 is it not. So, this 1 belongs to the lower class clearly number 1 1 belongs to lower class because a n which is 1 plus 1 by n power n will be greater than 1 for n greater than 1 or even equal to 1 n is equal to 1 also you just check greater than uh, sorry greater than uh, 1 this is a n is greater than x na? so this is greater than 1 sorry. So, x is basically 1 this number will always be greater than 1 when n is greater than equal to 1. So, this therefore, l is non empty okay. similarly x equal to 3 if I take then all the elements of a n s are less than 3 for all n for all n 1 plus 1 by n to the power n whatever the n you choose it will remain less than 3. So, 3 is an element belongs to therefore, 3 belongs to r. So, l and r both are both are non empty non empty this is the first it's results or that kind source in the section that is second one condition which is in the that kind source that <coughs> every rational number will be belongs to either L or R. So, second one every rational number P belongs to L or R second is to show every rational number every rational number 
belongs to every relation number p belongs to l or r this we want to show okay which is obviously two is obviously which is obvious why suppose a n is greater than p for all n p is a number p is a number i am choosing so there are two possibility either n will be greater than for all p or maybe n is less than p for some after certain stage okay so then n greater than p for all n then this p belongs to the lower class oh sorry upper class is it not upper class and if an is less than if an is uh, for some n is it not p below and if an greater than uh, no no this is if an is less than sorry what what was the upper case? yes an is less than by by is greater than an for all n so if an is less than p for all n then it is in upper class and if an is greater than p for some for some n then this p belongs to the lower class so take any p suppose i take p any number say 2 then you can say 1 plus 1 by n to the power n then you can choose n such a way that this class after a certain stage will satisfy this condition n greater than because limiting value of this is 3 e e is greater lying between this is it not limiting value of this will be the, what is this if i expand it 1 plus 1 by 2 this is the number actually 1 plus n plus n n minus 1 and so on so when you take the 2 plus something so if you take a number if all the numbers are less than 3 say then this number say 4 then all the numbers are less than 4 if i take a number 2 then there are some number where is greater than so we can identify all the numbers which is either in lower class or in the upper class so this is also true and third part is third part is what every number a in the lower class is less than the lower class so if x belongs to the lower class it means that x is less than a n for some n for some for n greater than or equal to say m onward is it not for all n greater than equal after certain stage it is less than this okay but but if x will be in y but in any element any element in y in the upper class r satisfy this condition condition is that a n is less than y for each n so if we from here x is less than a n for some n but this is less than y if this is an element in r this is true for every n this is true for some n after some m after some n m get m after some n onward okay after some m then this will always be less than y so any element in lower class will always be less than the elements in the upper class okay so this shows the property so all the conditions are satisfied dead kinds okay all requirement of the dead kinds theorem is set so this okay let's see the next problem Uh, suppose we have so that so that if a b x by are rational numbers are rational numbers such that such that a by minus b x whole square 
a by minus b x square plus 4 plus 4 a minus x b minus y is 0 then then such that an either x equal to a x equal to a y is equal to b or then either this part or 1 minus a b and 1 minus x y are squares of are squares of rational numbers rational numbers ok is is basically mathematical things ok uh, not much that kinds uh, cuts is required, but some well is required the concepts. Okay, so let p is a minus x, q is b minus y. Then, if I solve this a y minus b x, then we get if I just substitute these values and get we will get the value to be b p minus a q which is also the same as y p minus x q this is what ok. Just if I take this p and q then. So, our given relation 1. So, from given relation we can write a by minus a means b p minus a q whole square plus 4 p q is 0 or we can also write this thing as because this is also equivalent to this. So, we can write y p minus x q whole square plus 4 p q is 0. Okay. Now, clearly if x if p is equal to 0 q is also 0 that is if x is equal to a y is equal to b then p is 0 q is 0 the equations this 2 are satisfied are satisfied is it not obviously 2 that is nothing. Now, if they are not 0 if p is not 0 q is also not 0. Then one can divide by four p q and one can divide the equation 2. So, from equation 2 we get the relation ok we get from here now we can write like this. This is our a. So, we wanted to write 1 b p plus a q whole square if I just made the plus sign then 2 times of this will come in picture. So, here this is when you take the minus b and this is square. So, what you are getting is you are getting this is equal to plus 4 1 minus a b p q equal to 0. Okay. Then only it is balanced similarly if I take here y p plus x q whole square then you are getting 1 minus 1 minus x y 4 times of this into p q is 0. This is from 2 now divide by p q. So, from here we get 1 minus a b is equal to b p plus a q b p plus a q a q whole square divide by minus 4 p q, but minus 4 p q from here is nothing, but which is equivalent to b p plus a q divide by minus 4 p we can write this b p minus a q whole square. Similarly, 
1 minus x y we can also write in a similar way and this will be equal to if I put it in this form we can y p plus x q divided by whole square divided by y p minus x q whole square. So, what we conclude that if if a first is satisfied then also this equation is satisfied otherwise second is 1 minus a b can be written as square of the two rational numbers this is 1 minus a b is square of the rational number 1 minus x y is also square of the rational number and that is proved the result. Okay. Then last exercise let us see which is also an interesting one. If d is a positive integer, d is a positive integer, but not, but not the square of an integer, not the square of an integer. mean d is a positive integer, but not the square of an integer. It means square root of d becomes that uh, is not a square of this integer. So, what we can say is not a perfect square okay? a square of an integer and y is written in the form of suppose y is x into x square plus 3 d divided by 3 x square plus d, where x is given x is a positive rational number, positive rational numbers, x is a positive rational number, number. Okay. Then, so that y minus x equal to 2 x d minus x square divided by 3 x square plus d and y square minus d is nothing but x square minus d whole cube divided by 3 x square plus d whole square. Hence, so that Hence, so that the section, the section of the positive rational number, rational numbers determined, determined by assigning to assigning to the upper class all rational numbers all rational numbers whose square is greater than d greater than d and to the lower class lower class all the other rational numbers rational numbers. So, that the section of the positive rational number determined by assigning to the upper class all rational numbers whose square is greater than d and to the lower class all other rational number each not generated is not generated 
by a rational number. Okay. Let us see first let us see the, the first part of this I am not interested in this because this is a routine thing you are having the value by is given x is already given. So, by minus x you will find this expression by square minus d you will find the expression just simple calculation. So, we are not interested in solving this, but this is required while showing that this section is not a rational number. Okay. So, what is the meaning of the meaning is that this is our lower class, this is the upper class, we are taking those positive positive rational numbers which are whose square rational number say x such that square is greater than d and lower class rest of the rest of rational numbers. So, this will include all negative and those remaining positive also and positive some positive but here exclusively positive square is greater than d. Now, this number say alpha we wanted to show alpha is not rational is not rational this is our ok. So, let us see the proof is very sim simple just go ahead uh, ok. The upper class clearly clearly the upper class R R has no least number has no least number because for because if suppose x belongs to this class suppose x belongs to the upper class R ok. So, by definition so this implies that x square must be greater than d when x square is greater than d and the function is defined like this. So, x square is greater than d then by square is greater than d and here x square so by minus x is negative ok. So, we get from here is as the uh, this one defined. So, that we find by then we find by we find by as defined as defined which is such which is such that by is strictly less than x and by square is greater than d. So, if I take any number x in the upper class then what if we are getting another number by which is lower than the x, but still it is in the uh, upper class this implies that y is in the upper class r. So, x cannot upper class cannot have a least number. Similarly, lower class cannot have an upper number largest number we cannot have the lower class as the greatest number greatest number why because the reason is for if suppose x belongs to the class L then if x belongs to class L then x square must be less than d otherwise x will be in upper class ok. So, x square less than d then the by by so defined will give what if x square is get less than d then this is positive. So, by minus x is positive. So, by is greater than x. So, again the by belongs to lower class. So, if x is in the lower class then we are also getting another number by which also in lower class but greater than a. So, l cannot have a largest number. If x square is less than d then this is positive. So, this is positive mean by minus is greater than 0. So, by must be greater than x it means by is another class another point in lower class which in this. So, a contradiction therefore, section l r l r represents represents irrational number that is all thank you clear thanks. Okay.